Hey there, you beautiful, sexy, sassy, independent, spectacular, amazing, wonderful, beautiful people. Welcome to the LP Variety Hour number six. Now, a lot of you guys are probably thinking to yourself, what in the world am I listening to right now? This is the LP Variety Hour. I have not made one of these for a long time, and this channel has probably gained quite a few subscribers since I made an LP Variety Hour way back in the day. What this is, this is just me talking to either get you through cardio, get you through something in your day that you hate. I want to make sure that you're listening to this when you're doing something terrible. The thing that you, the thing that you can't stand doing. Uh, it could be cardio. Cardio is optimal. I'm going to bet that that is when many people listen to this is cardio. I'm, I'm going to bet this gets quite a few people through cardio. Now, the reason that this is coming back is because... At the last expo in Ohio, at the Arnold, I had about, I think, four to five different people come up to me and say, LP, I hate to tell you what to do, but you need to start making those LP variety hours again because those were helping me. It helped me get through this, helped me get through that, whatever it was. And let me tell you guys, that touches my heart. And I could tell that these people that came up to me... I think about like two or three of them, I could tell that they were very shy people. You know how you can just tell somebody's shy and it takes a lot for them to say something to somebody? Maybe some, like, for some people it's like a big deal meeting fitness YouTubers. Something you guys got to understand is we're all just normal people, man. We're not like, I don't want to say we're nothing special, but we're definitely, we're just people that have fitness YouTube channels. And sometimes you get a little bit taken back when somebody is like so nervous to meet you. It is, it's, it's like... It's weird to think that you make somebody nervous, man. It's kind of strange. Now, two or three of these people, I could tell that they were a little bit nervous to talk to me. Now, there was this one girl in particular. I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but she knows who she is. She came up to me, and she's, I, I don't know how old she was. She had very young, and I could tell that her and her boyfriend wanted to say this, and they were both very, very shy, but they both were like, LP, could you, could you make the LP Variety Hour again? I, I really like that. And th this was in the middle of a very loud act. I had to come in close. and li like This is a very, very shy person, very quiet. And I was like, you know what? If this LP Variety Hour is helping people like that that are, that are, that are shy and it's kind of hard for them to come out of their shell, and this is something that's helping them come out of their shell and hearing my, my outlook on life is helping them, then you know what, man? This needs to be made and this needs to happen. It may not get very many views or whatever, and it may not be like the, the hot talk of the town. It's not like a cutting series or anything like that, but I need to make this, man. And so this is going to start happening again. I'm going to try and make one of these every single week. I'm going to try and put them up every Monday, and I get to talk about whatever I want to talk about on here, guys. So I warn you, we're going to be talking about some very strange stuff, and you're going to get to go deep, deep inside of LP's brain because when he sits by himself with a completely empty house with a microphone and he can just talk about whatever he wants, it's going to get interesting, man. And today, the first thing I want to talk about is flying. Flying to Ohio uh, about two weeks ago got me thinking about all sorts of stuff. So I wrote stuff down and um, some I find interesting about flying. Let's just start with the airport. When you get into the airport, have you ever noticed how miserable people are? People are very, very, very miserable. They are very unhappy to be flying. And it's weird because, like, you can have somebody... Who did we see? Daxter the Blade Jackson, I think it was, at the airport? You can have somebody, like, famous as that. You can have somebody, like, really ultra-famous. But guess what, man? They got to fly on the same crappy airplane that you fly on. And they got to sit in the exact same crappy little seat that you do everything else oh maybe they didn't get a window seat flight's gonna kind of suck it's the exact same standards for everybody so it kind of brings everybody down to this like medium standard and everybody gets very pissed off at the airport man they are they are not in a good mood at the airport nobody's in a good mood now i encourage like Ladies, if you're a single lady out there, or men, if you're single out there, I encourage you that if you're in a relationship, make sure to check out how your significant other handles the airport. And 
if that if that person gets you know if they kind of have fun with it and they can make kind of a joke out of all the stuff oh man you've got yourself a winner guys you need to go for that guys if you find a woman that doesn't get too flustered by the airport and just can kind of like make a joke out of stuff and it's kind of no big deal that's a keeper man that is awesome uh, I'm not trying to say that me and my brother are keepers or anything, but when you watch me and my brother go through an airport, we make like the security laugh. We'll make the, like last time, what was it? Uh, oh, Brian's camera bag uh, got flagged through the x-ray thing. Because there's a lot of weird gadgets in there and stuff, man. Who knows? There could be a bomb in there. You never know. There's a lot of like cameras, cords, batteries. Who knows what's in there? So of course they want to inspect that bag. Uh, as the guy inspected the bag, he like shoved some device in there that senses for explosives. I don't remember what he said, but I think I said, that's what she said. And man, that guy lost it. And me and my brother, Brian, we love doing that to people. And if you can find somebody that's like level headed in the airport, that's a keeper, man. Like maybe you're just, maybe you're bored for like two hours at the airport and you're flying out of your hometown. And you see a girl that, like, isn't too flustered by all this. You should go give her a talking to. Because you know what? That's a pretty solid-minded person, in my opinion. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how weird airplanes are. Uh, last time, I had to fly before the Ohio. I think it was to... I think it was actually to Ohio. I think it was... No, 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 Colorado. I take that back. It was Colorado. Uh, I was sitting next to this older lady... And she doesn't do too well with flying. So she ended up like getting into like a cold sweat, kind of like huffing and puffing. And then eventually she like threw up and stuff. And it made me realize that I've just become acclimated to flying. You're in like a metal tube, literally, that just has a couple little wings that stick off of it. Metal out, little, little metal sticks that pop out of the, the metal tube and you blast down a runway at like almost 200 miles an hour into the air. Have you ever watched an airplane wing sit there and flex as it flies through the air? It is the most creepy thing ever. All you can think in your brain is, oh man, that airplane wing, that airplane wing is definitely about to snap off and we're about to spiral to a fiery, fire, terrible death. But in fact, the fact that the wing is moving is actually a good thing. A lot of people don't know that. If the wing wasn't moving, if it was just sitting there completely fixed and it was solid, it would actually snap easier because there's no flex. It's just like when you're in a big, like a high-rise building. If you don't feel any flex in the building when the wind is blowing, that is not a good thing because that building can just snap and fall over instead of flexing under stress. And it's a good thing. Now, to me, flying is a... Uh, Flying is like, it's, it's, to me, I find it to be like, like a miracle thing. It's a miracle to me. I find it amazing that human beings are able to go thousands and thousands of feet in the air and travel. I think it's like 185 miles an hour airplanes tra travel, something. I don't remember the, the precise number, but that's pretty cool, man. And they don't run into each other either. That's pretty neat. And if you think about the delicate balance that it takes for an airplane to fly, that's pretty amazing in itself. Like if you sit there and think about, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this thing, it's called a thermal. And so in um, like remote control airplanes and stuff like that, you can see a thermal happen like right in front of your face because an RC plane is very lightweight, it's very small. And so what will be happening, what will happen, I fly little tiny drones for fun like little hobby ones. I don't fly anything crazy that costs like a thousand dollars or anything, but you can kind of see this happen whenever you fly a mini, like a tiny drone too. It's called a thermal. And what it is, it's just basically hot air. that's just kind of just chilling in places and it just kind of rises up out of anywhere. Just, you'll just be flying a, a plane and all of a sudden a thermal will hit you and it's just kind of like, woof. It just kind of blasts the plane up all of a sudden. Now, it doesn't happen to like normal air, normal like airlines, I don't believe, because they're so big. But let's just say that you were like flying and all of a sudden just a big warm gust of air just like took the plane up all of a sudden. That would 
That would suck, man. That'd be really crazy. And then you think about tornadoes and stuff like that. Just think about weather and think about how, like, susceptible we are as humans to weather. Like, you and your house, if a tornado comes, that's pretty damn scary, man. Uh, if you're in an airplane, though, you're just in this, like, tiny metal tube that's been riveted together and you're gonna like encounter some kind of crazy thing in the air now like i've seen uh the video tests of when they they'll throw like a full turkey into an airplane motor which are made by rolls royce i don't know if a lot of people knew that but the same people that make rolls royce back in the day not now back in the day they actually made airplane motors that's pretty cool man I think that's pretty sweet. Anyhow, I'll see these videos where they like throw like turkeys and stuff into airplane engines. And a lot of people don't know this, but those things are extremely expensive and they have very high tolerances. Like you can, I saw one where they threw like a boulder or something into one. Now, it didn't by any means like survive the, the hit of the boulder, but instead of exploding and like throwing shrapnel all over the place and like blowing up the airplane wing and making the plane go down what it did do is it just kind of like contained the explosion within itself and just kind of just kind of went on about its way so like you could imagine if something like that hit your hit your uh your engine when you're in the air it actually wouldn't affect the plane that much like it would be catastrophic feeling if you were in the plane you would definitely absolutely positively for sure think that you are going to die right then and there but afterwards you'd still be flying man it wouldn't be pleasant it'd probably be very bumpy but that pilot could get you down even though a boulder went through the engine man like that's pretty cool yeah when you watch the turkey go through the turkey just kind of gets sliced up and that's it and it's just kind of done like there's there, there's been there's like that rumor ever since you're young when you're uh when you're gonna get on a plane all your friends are like oh like you know, you can an a a chicken or a not a chicken, <laughs> some kind of bird can fly into the engine and the whole plane can explode. No man, like that doesn't happen. Like the engines are like I don't even remember like two hundred thousand dollars a piece or something like that. It's quite insane. On to more amazing things about airplanes. Uh, on the way home from Ohio after the expo. First of all, we filmed for C.T. Fletcher and all that stuff, and it, it was amazing. And I feel like I'm going to do a whole other LP variety hour on, like, C.T., what it's like to film for him, uh, what's coming up for us, all that stuff. And I feel like that, that'll be really cool for people. But it was, it was like a, a euphoric, crazy experience at the expo this time. Like, it was, we're, we're, we're doing stuff that never thought would happen, to be honest. It's, it's insane to me. So it was very euphoric and very, like, unreal to me. So on, on the way home, when we were flying, it was, like, I think 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock our time here in California, flying back from Ohio. And we were above, I believe it was Mexicali or somewhere before Mexicali. And it was pitch black. There was not one light anywhere on the ground nothing like every once in a while you could tell that there was like a there was like a farmer that had his like his porch line on or something and he left it on her. or i don't even know what was out in these parts because it was just pitch black you couldn't see anything didn't even know if there was anybody down there but what i could see is that the ocean the ocean's uh the ocean's horizon you know how when you normally see the ocean you're on the ground and you see the ocean's horizon and it's it's way off there. It feels kind of above your eye level, at your eye level a little bit, kind of below. Within there, you can kind of see it. When you're way, 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 way high up in an airplane, the horizon changes. The horizon is like very far below you. So what happened, because it was so dark at night and you couldn't really see where that horizon started, there was this optical illusion that happened. And what happened was is that it was so dark you couldn't see the horizon of the ocean, and it was so low from the plane, it was almost below you. So you kind of forgot about the horizon of the ocean, and you kind of forgot that the ocean, like, existed at all. And because it was so dark, you could see every single star. Like, you could see all of them, man. Like, 
it, you I, I was I was looking out the window of the airplane and you could see the the it was I've never been able to say this but I could feel how close certain stars were and how far other ones were it could have been how tired I was but I kind of doubt it uh it it felt as though you were in outer space it was the weirdest thing I was sitting there with the blanket that they give you on the airplane pressed up against the back of my head pressing it up against the wall of the airplane so that I could have a completely pitch black view of this amazing thing that was going on outside of the window like I, I it's very rare that LP gets like taken back by like just a visual thing that I see in real life this blew my mind I was sit like my mouth was I was sitting there with my mouth open just like Oh my god, this is, I, I wish I had a camera so that I could capture it for you people. Like, it, it was, it was so dark. There's no way to even take a picture. I was so, it, it was incredible how it, it felt as though you were in outer space. Because you were up in the stars and the horizon was way below the plane. I encourage you guys, if you ever fly, I'm afraid of heights to death. I do not, I don't like heights. You can, like in the mall, if I go up the escalator, I stand in the center of the escalator because I'm so scared of heights. I really hate heights. Bungee jumping, never, ever, ever, no way. But when I'm in an airplane, you can rest assured that I'm going to be looking out the window. I love looking out the window. For some reason, it just completely doesn't bug me that we're that high up. Don't even know why, just doesn't. Yeah, but this, the, the, I don't know, the, I can't even describe, even my brother was taken back by this. He was like, oh my gosh, that's, that's like amazing. It's, I, I can't believe how cool that looks. It, and it was weird because it's like, it's the first time in my life that I've actually felt uh, like I was high enough in the air where you could not feel the curve of the earth, like the actual curvature and the, the spherical nature of the, the earth. But you could feel that like, out, I, I felt like outer space exists, like all of a sudden. It was really strange. And we were nowhere near like the, uh, the, the, the ozone layer or whatever that you have to penetrate to get through to outer space. But because we were so high up, we were kind of in the middle of the stars almost. It was so amazing. It was, I, I, I was taken back by it. It was just one of those moments where, like, you kind of just realize that you're really lucky to be alive. Like, and technology is pretty cool sometimes. All right. On to my next subject. And that is uh, just negativity and just hating in general. I want, I want to, it's, this is a message that has been relayed so many times over and over via very many inspirational Instagram posts and YouTube videos within this fitness YouTube community. But one thing I want to say about hating is that, and all this YouTube beef stuff and all this stuff, if somebody's paying attention to you, you should, you should be pretty honored. And if they're, they're paying attention, and that's pretty awesome. They know your name. They watch your videos. To check out your Instagram, you're on their radar. Quite often I get honored when uh, people talk about me, my brother, or uh, people associated with me. I get, it, it, it's not like excitement, but I know that uh, it means that I matter to someone. And I kind of like that sometimes. It's kind of nice. Now, sometimes haters and negativity, sometimes it'll get to you a little bit. And sometimes um, it's better to be, it's better to, instead of participating in the negativity, it's better to just like kind of notice what's going on, take notice of it, laugh about it, make a joke about it, talk about it to somebody, recognize it's there, but then move on with your life. Uh, w one thing that my brother has taught me more than anyone is that if you're busy, like, if you truly have things to do, like you're really busy, you don't have any time for people being negative or saying negative things. You just simply don't have time for it. There's just no time, and you don't even care about it. I have used this 
so much. If you in my like in my personal life, if you just stay busy, just always have stuff to do. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't have is stuff to do. Like they have work, but work isn't really work. Work is just kind of like getting through that eight hours and during that eight hours, you're flicking through Instagram, you're flicking through Facebook, or you're messaging someone about what Sally said last night at the bar, or whatever it is. You're not actually like doing something. And one thing I encourage people to do, if if, if people talking about you negatively, or whatever it is, oh, P.S. guys, we hit the 20 minute mark about 30 to 40 seconds ago. For those of you doing cardio right now, I congratulate you for making it 20 minutes because either you're done, me personally, I do 20 minutes of cardio, or you've got about 10 minutes left and you're going to hit that 30-minute mark. You can do this, baby girl. Keep going. If you're doing those stairs, keep stepping. I know your calves are burning. Your butt's probably burning too on the stairs, but you've got this. You can do it. Back to hating. Someone's, if, 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 if you let it get to you, that means you don't have something to do in that period of time. And that's kind of how I'm starting to look at hating. Uh, you just have to stay busy. If you have something that's occupying your time and satisfying you, you've got no time for anybody saying bad stuff about you. Like YouTube, uh, the fitness expos, all this stuff keeps me and my brother plenty busy so that it's just like, I, I don't even... Man, just go away. I don't even care. Like it's it you're you're just penetrating my time bubble and you're making it so I can't do things. So just go, please. Now, one thing that I see happen, uh th- this this is this is something where this is like a big thing for me. I decide like how alpha you are and how awesome of a person you are when it comes to how you deal with with people talking about you and people looking at you, people saying negative things or whatever it is. Cause like, if you make time for it all the time, I don't really have a lot of respect for you. But if you like, just ignore it and you just keep doing your thing and you always find other things to do instead, LP's got a lot of respect for you. Now, one thing that I see happen a lot, like in the gym is you will see, okay, this happens to me, like, pretty often. And what will happen is that I will come into a gym. I will be lifting my light little weights that I do because I'm a bodybuilder. I'm not, like, you know, I'm not bench pressing 315 because I, I don't really need to. I'm a big guy with long arms. Probably never going to happen. Rest of my life, I've dealt with that. But what I have done is I've learned how to make lighter weight work for me and help me grow now someone will see me come in the gym you know let's say it's like the the quote-unquote big dude of the gym but lp is a little bigger than him now what does lp do he or what what does uh what does this dude at the gym do he starts trying to show off for lp he starts trying to show off for me he'll start putting you know three plates on this machine or that machine and he oh man he'll look you in the eye and make sure that you're looking while he does it and everything and the thing that like the thing that people like this don't understand about me personally is that my respect level just like drifts slowly down as you exercise for me if you're exercising for me i like my i i am so not interested in what you're doing then like i do not care now you'll see some like amazing like there's a gym that me and baby girl go to and there's a guy oh what is his name on instagram shout out real quick he's not even like a a big fitness like instagram or anything he did but this dude is aesthetically amazing looking swole biden i think that's his name forget how to spell i forget how to spell that but one day I'm just sitting there in the gym and I'm watching this guy. He minds his own business. He's just deadlifting in the corner, doing his thing. But this guy looks amazing. But he's minding his own business, just kind of doing his thing, not looking at nobody. Everybody's looking at him, though, I can tell you that. 
I walk over there, and I'm like, dude, I just have to tell you real quick, no homo, you are beautiful. Like, you're probably the best looking guy I've ever seen in this gym. High five, hats off to you, sirs. And he was like, dude, man, thank you for coming. Thanks for coming up and saying something. Instead of just like staring all the time or, or like saying something to your friends or whatever, you, you actually came up and I'm like, that's why I came up, man. Just to like feed some positive energy into your world. You keep kicking ass, man. Now, what would most guy like? What would most people do? Oh, they'd try and like lift near him and lift more weight than him and show off. When in fact, all you're doing is like you're just like ruining your split. You're probably supposed to be doing chest that day, but you're trying to do deadlifts next to this guy or this girl or whatever you're trying to do. You're just like showing off for other people. Your time is being spent on other people. That's my problem. You need to spend time on yourself. As soon as you spend time on yourself and get your little world aligned like perfectly and your little planets aligned just right in your world and all the magnetic fields are matching perfectly everything spins really well it's like an eclipse every once in a while and your world is perfect your universe is like perfect and balanced all of a sudden you go into the gym you go into job interviews uh traffic all sorts of stuff the grocery store talking to that girl that you like you go into all that stuff with a completely different state of mind. People hating on you just makes you laugh when everything's balanced and you've just got like good alignment. Everything's working. All right, guys. I think that, uh, I think I'm going to end, I think I'm going to end this LP Variety Hour now because I'm going to be honest. I'm getting a little bit antsy and I really really want to go hit back biceps and triceps right now what i want you guys to do if you guys enjoyed this and you like it and this helped you get through your cardio ops you've got three minutes until 30 minutes guys if you're trying to hit that 30 minute mark you guys are so close to it lp almost got you all the way through the 30 minutes you are welcome uh if you guys enjoy this if you're listening to it during your cardio if 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 you're a i've had I've had like big YouTubers come up to me and tell me that they listened to this. If you're a big YouTuber, will you please leave a comment? It will make my day. Other people will see it. It makes their day. It makes them want to share it with their friends. If you guys can hit that like button for me, you guys don't even understand. Like, just commenting is like putting a dollar in, you know, the guy that plays the guitar in the subway and he's sitting there. Maybe he's playing a banjo. He's in there playing a banjo, and you go up and you put a, a, a dollar in his hat that he put on the ground, and there's that cute little dog that he has as well. That's what you're doing for me every time you leave a comment. Or if, if, if you share this on your Facebook, if you share it anywhere, if you just tell some friends, it's like you're paying me, man. I can't even tell you guys how much it helps. And if you guys want this to grow... I really want this to be something that I do every week, and I know it sounds kind of lame, but it doesn't get it. Sometimes it doesn't get that many views, and it's something that doesn't grow that quickly. So I'm really trying to make this grow, and I'm also always looking for subject matter to talk about. So if you guys please in the comments leave things that you want me to talk about, leave if you think that there should be something different about this, please leave that in the comments. You leave whatever you want. Just make sure you leave a comment. Do anything. Share it. Talk talk to your grandma about it. Whatever you want. Just please share this because that's how this is going to grow. And I have nothing else to say. LP is actually out of things to say, guys. I will see you guys next time. And thank you so much for listening. I hope cardio was good. You've literally only got 50 seconds left right now if you're doing 30 minutes. I will see you guys next time.